Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, warm welcome to our guests and visitors who are here with us today. We are so, so glad that you're here. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, uh, Valentine's Sunday. Gentlemen, that was your warning. Um, or as I like to say the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. That's what we're going to be focusing on here today. Uh, if you watch the, the preview video, um, that, that I share out on YouTube, I, I share that a, a pastor friend of mine, one thing that he does to try and spark up conversations about his faith with other people is he'll just walk up to total strangers and he'll say, good day, bad day. Good day, bad day. I've tried that a few times, just checking that out with other, other people. And, and, and it just kind of kicks off the conversation. How, instead of just saying, how's it going? Everybody's going to say, how's it going? Fine. Good. But, but are you really... Um, as, as Christians, what can we say? How can we respond to that? How can we respond if someone were to ask you, how are you today? I, how, can I, how can I respond? I can say I'm blessed today. Now, when we talk about having a blessed life, and this is going to be the focus of our service here today, that we are living a blessed life. It, it doesn't mean that, that Christians are always, you know, skipping through life with joy of Jesus jolting through your veins and you just got this constant smile on your face. That's not what it means to be a Christian. And, and, and when we say we're blessed by God, it doesn't mean that our bank accounts are always full or that our, 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 our bill of health is always perfect and clean. That's, that's not what that means to be blessed by God. But what does that mean? That I can say with confidence, that I can say with not maybe not happiness all the time, but with joy. And there's a difference between that. We'll talk about that too. That there's this constant joy in my heart that regardless of what's going on in my life, regardless uh, of the turmoil, regardless of the loss of a job or the, the cancer or the relationship hurting or the, the guilt, the shame that's weighing me down, regardless of all of that, I'm blessed because I have the news of my Savior's love. I'm blessed because I have the joy of forgiveness in my heart. I'm blessed because heaven is my home, and I look forward to that, that mansion that Jesus has prepared for me today. So I, I hope if someone asks you today, how are you doing today, you can respond with joy and confidence. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. So that's what we're going to celebrate today, our blessed life in Christ. We'll begin with our opening hymn, uh, Oh That I Had a Thousand Voices. May God bless us here in his house today. <laughs>
Friends in Christ, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Him and through Him, through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Praise be to His glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with His glory. In repentant faith, we come before our Lord in confession. Almighty God, King of all, we confess to you that we are sinful by nature. We have lived in darkness rather than light. Our selfish thoughts, harmful words, and faithless actions reveal our sinfulness. But for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who became flesh for us, we pray, forgive us our sins. Amen. God's grace is revealed in the birth, life, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has brought light to this world darkened by sin. In the place of and by the command of Jesus, I announce to you the full forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. We lift our hearts in praise by singing our next hymn. This is a little bit of a longer intro, just so you're aware as this goes through. We sing, Speak, O Lord.
just just to share with you, um, six years ago, my brother was in a helicopter accident uh, flying for the military. And some of you know this, that, that my brother Steve was paralyzed from the waist down. Um, when he crashed, it was, it was the January 31st, and uh, my sister-in-law called. Um, they were in Tennessee at the time. She said, I think you should probably come. And so uh, next morning, I caught a flight, flew down to go see him, um, went into the, the emergency room and, and see him in the intensive care unit. And my brother, he's not as big as I am. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's a little bit shorter. And he, his nickname was Leonidas, okay, when he was in the military because he was just really ripped and cut. And he was just so broken and battered. He was wrapped up like a mummy, all swollen. I, I didn't even recognize him when I saw him at first. Um, and third degree burns, he broke a bunch of bones. Um, uh, hurt his, br broke his back, severed his si spinal cord, and uh, for a while it was touch and go. We didn't know if he was going to live. The hymn that we just sang was the hymn that we sang when I went to church after seeing him for the first time. That was the hymn. So when we're talking about having a blessed life, and you, you take that, take the, the worship folder home today and reread the, 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 the words of that hymn, Help us grasp the heights of your plans for us. Um, help me, Lord, see how there's going to be some good come out of this. So whatever you're struggling with right now, whatever pain and trial that you're going through, you can still say with confidence and joy that you're blessed because of what Christ has planted. True is deep down inside your heart. He's planted that deep down inside your heart to bring you that, that contentment and that joy. And that's what Jesus wants you to have as you live your blessed life. We'll continue then with the salutation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you know that we are surrounded by many dangers and that we often stumble and fall. Strengthen us in body and mind and bring us safely through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 3. Here we find uh, three men who were faithful to God and refused to bow their, their knee to a, a king who was demanding that they worship him rather than worshiping the Lord. And as a result of taking a stand on their faith, uh, these men were persecuted. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I think we as American Christians have it relatively easy as far as persecution. Um, I, I've said before, I, I don't know that I could really give a, an honest answer with, you know, when I get to heaven and I, and I, I table up with, with Paul and Luther. Boy, boy, boy's ministry was really rough, wasn't it? You know, what did you have, Paul? Oh, yeah, you were stoned a couple times and shipwrecked and beaten and jailed. Luther, you were declared an outlaw. Um, there was a bounty on your head. What about you, Mark? I had a, a lady yell at me a time or two. Kicked off a door, you know, a, a porch every once in a while. We're blessed in that fortunate, you know, fortunate in that capacity that we don't we don't face a real rough persecution that many people do. But that isn't to say that it won't come. And it isn't to say that, that, that we won't be persecuted for our faith, even in the smaller degrees. But yet, what is it that gives us the confidence to be able to stand on the truth? It's God, God and his word. A lesson from Daniel chapter 3. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? These men, they could have just gone along with it. They had a cushy job. They were well loved by the king. They could have gone, gone along just to get along. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. 
and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. This is God's word. Our second lesson is a continuation of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, Paul reminds us that because we have Christ, we have the wisdom that we need, the knowledge that we need for our salvation. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is God's word. Out of respect for the words of our Savior Christ Jesus, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our Holy Gospel for this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord is taken from Matthew chapter 5. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor and pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is God's word. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the uh, small children to come forward for the children's message. Morning, morning. How are you guys? Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed today. We're talking about that today. Let's see. I took some pictures, some screenshots. I wonder, I'm curious if you guys know who some of these people are. Do you know? Do you know who that is? No? No? You know who that is? Do you know who that is, Grace? No, no, that's Patrick Mahomes. He's playing in the Super Bowl, <laughs> playing in the Super Bowl today. Playing in the Super Bowl today. How about this guy? Do you know who that guy is? <laughs> no idea. Who is it? Michael not Michael Jordan. Nope, not Michael Jordan. Do you know who that is? Grace, do you know who that one? Who's that? It's LeBron James. Yeah, he broke, he broke the scoring title for basketball earlier today. How about this guy? Who's this guy? Do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? No idea? What? Who? It's not Will from Lego Master. No. Do you know who that is, Grace? Elon Musk. Yeah, he's the richest man in the world. Let's see. What about, what about this guy? Do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Who's that? He's from what? He's from a TV show, yeah. He has his own YouTube channel. Do you know who that is, Grace? Ryan it's Ryan. Yeah, it's Ryan. He's, 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 got, he's got one of the biggest YouTube channels. It's like Ryan's Toys. And all he does is he reviews kids' toys on YouTube and says what he thinks about the toys. And he's like made like, what, $22 million or something like that last year. Just telling people what he thinks about, oh, these are, my to these are cool toys. These are not cool toys. Huh? How about this? Do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? No. No? Grace, do you know who that is? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Yeah, she's a, she's a music star. Yeah, she sings a lot of songs. You might not you don't know who these people are. Some people know who they are. And some people think and pretty popular. You know, some people richest person in the world, or if you have the best scoring title in basketball, or if you win a Super Bowl, you know, that people would say, well, they're pretty important. Maybe, maybe not. You know, they, they, they got a lot, they bring a lot of happiness and joy to other people's lives, and, and, and people kind of know who they are. Um, but, you know, what, what, is, what is it that is life all about? Is, is it to, to make as much money as you can? No. No. Is it to become big, rich, and famous? No, that's, that's, not, that's not what life's all about. Um, is it to know that you're loved by Jesus? Yeah, it's, that's what's the best thing ever. So even if I have a lot of money or if I don't have a lot of money, if I have a lot of friends or if I have no friends, if I'm healthy or if I'm sick, what always remains true is that Jesus loves you no matter what. No matter what's going on in your life, if you feel like you have a lot of friends or not, if you feel like you're, 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 you're healthy or if you're sick, no matter what's going on in your life, Jesus loves you. And I want you to know that each and every day because that brings us, that brings us joy in our hearts.
Okay? Let's fold our hands and let's thank Jesus for loving us, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and dying on the cross to make me your child. Love me each and every day and help remind me of this each and every day. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right. Nice work. Thanks for coming up. You can go back and sit back down. If you want, we do have child care where she, there she is, there's Mrs. Cooper. So if you want uh, Lori to take your child, uh, she will return them eventually. But uh, if you'd like her to watch your child during child care for the sermon and, and for the rest of the service, you can do that. Uh, we'll continue then with the singing of our next hymn, Jesus Sat With His Disciples. God's grace, his mercy and peace are yours in abundance through Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. Uh, friends in Christ, the words for our consideration are taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, you heard me read those earlier, and I'll be reading them throughout the sermon. So uh, I'd ask you, please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Fellow children of God, blessed by the Lord. It's so great being a Christian, isn't it? Hashtag blessed life. That's what we live, right? Ever since you were a kid, right? It was just easy being a Christian. All the kids at school wanted to be your friends because you're a Christian, right? Obviously. Most popular, because you're a Christian. You aced all your quizzes, all your tests. Like, you know, I'm sure you did too, right? From a little on, school was so easy. There was never any peer pressure. No one ever spread rumors about you behind your back ever since you were a kid, because after all, you're, you're a Christian. As you got a little older, living that blessed life, that hashtag blessed life as a Christian, you got into any school that you wanted to get. 
All the job opportunities opened up because you're a Christian, right? Your boss always re recognized everything that you did, even the little things that nobody else paid attention to. He knew what you were doing, and he acknowledged it. Because hashtag blessed life, you're a Christian. It's just so great. It's just so perfect. It, it continues and permeates in every aspect of your life with all your relationships, with your friends and with your siblings. We never feud because hashtag blessed life, we're all Christians. You get those relationships with your spouse and, oh, husbands are always so attentive to their husband's needs. And wives, oh, they're always so respectful. They never say things like, I, I have four children and I'm married to one of them. They never say anything like that. She's never said that, by the way. She's never, she's never said that. Never. <laughs> your children always listen to everything that you have to say, Right? Perfect little lambs. I mean, remember the monsters they were before you brought them to the baptismal font. But now, man, ever since they were babies, they were changing their own diapers. They were so well behaved. It was fantastic. Hashtag blessed life. That's what it means to be a Christian. That's what it's like. Right? I don't know about you, but I have that problem where I had to put zippers on my pockets because money just keeps falling out of my pockets. My bills are always paid. Just have that problem, you know, too much money in my life. I never have to pull weeds at my house, never have to trim no bushes. Nope, they just stay at the perfect site just because that's what it's like. Hashtag blessed life. That's what it's like. Life as a Christian. The car never breaks down. I never have to fix the AC unit. Everything always works out just great. I'm in perfect health, obviously, right? I never have to wrestle with any illness, never have to struggle with any disease, never have to have any pain because hashtag blessed life, that's what it's like being a Christian. There's so many people that have a misconception of what, what it's like to be a Christian or what you can expect in your life from being a Christian. There's even different Christian denominations. They teach this thing called theology of glory, that if you follow Jesus, everything is going to work out. Everything's going to be great. You're going to get that job. You're going to get that promotion. Uh, and, they, they, and they talk about that, and obviously that's not true. Just because you follow Jesus doesn't mean everything's going to work out like you want it to work out. So there's these misconceptions that I kind of want to put to rest this morning of, what does that mean when we can say, you know, what, what, what can you expect for your life to change as you follow Christ? What does that mean when, when you say, I'm a Christian and I follow Jesus and I, I, I'm blessed by him? You know, we say that word in church, blessed. We say that an awful lot. And it's one of those words that just gets kind of thrown around, I think, an awful lot at church. And, and we just kind of assume people know what it is that we're talking about. What does that mean when we say, I'm, I'm blessed by God? I mean, Grandma always said, count your blessings. Well, what does that mean? What exactly does that mean? That I am blessed and I'm living a blessed life. Because I want you to know, and if you walk away with just this one thought this morning, if you walk away just one thing today, you are blessed by God. You are absolutely 100% blessed by Him. What, regardless of what's going on, because if you've ever seen like a camera at the bottom of the ocean while a storm is just raging on, what's the bottom of the ocean look like? Smooth and steady. So whatever storm is raging on deep down in the very recess of your heart, I want you to know that what's shining there is the love of Christ. What's shining in there is that light of truth that God has a home for you in heaven, that you are loved and cherished by God. Think about that. God cherishes you. So regardless of what's going on, whether it's sickness or cancer, whether it's, it's struggling to pay the bills or a relationship problem or guilt or shame, whatever's going on on the surface, deep down, very in the deepest recesses of your heart, know that you are blessed by God because you're loved by him. To do that, to talk about that, we're looking at what's often referred to as the Beatitudes. It's the blessed statements of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, uh, Jesus goes into arguably his most famous sermon. And this, these are the opening lines of it. Uh, he's been teaching out in the open with mixed crowds, both believers and unbelievers. And, and, and we're told in the verses just before our lesson, Jesus went through Galilee. 
um, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the peoples. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, this is a, a loose federation of cities around the Sea of Galilee, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Masses of people drove out to come out and find Jesus. And, and they brought with him all of their problems, both their physical and their spiritual ones. And they said, Jesus, please, please, we need you to help us. Because we're struggling. And here's the thing. Jesus doesn't promise you as you follow him. He doesn't say you're not going to struggle as you go through life. That is a part, a consequence of living in a sinful world. That's a consequence of having sinful flesh is that we're going to face difficulties and trials. But when those times come, we go exactly to Jesus. And here's what he says. Here's what he offered them, this blessed life. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. I'll take that, that first one here. The blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Usually when we think rich and poor, we think dollar signs, we think you know, fancy zip codes on easy street, we think cushy jobs. But, but Jesus isn't talking about that when he's, when he's saying poor in spirit that you're, or, or, or rich with wealth. He, he's saying that you, you recognize where you stand before God, that you're spiritually bankrupt. That's what we are. We, we really have scraps, nothing, not, not even scraps to offer God as a bargaining chip about our own righteousness to plead our case before him. Um, it, it reminds me of Jesus' parable of the, the Pharisee and the tax collector in the synagogue. Kind of give me a nod if you remember this one. You remember this one where, where the Pharisee and the tax collector, they, they both go into the synagogue to pray and the Pharisee's standing out in the open for everyone to hear and he's praying in a loud voice. Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so glad that you made me. And boy, aren't you lucky to have me as one of your children. Uh, and, and Lord, I give my tithe and I give even above that and I fast and then some more than you require, more than you, more than you could ever ask me to do. And I certainly thank you, Lord, that you've blessed me and that you love me enough that you haven't made me like that, that tax collector who's sitting in the corner over there. And the tax collector, what is he, what's he doing is he's praying. He's beating his chest and he's wetting the floor with his tears and he's, he's crying out to God, God have mercy on me. God have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus asked the crowd, which, which of those two men walked away forgiven? The answer was obvious. It's the one who was repentant. Uh, we have a we have a, a in home Bible study that's coming up. Tim and Diane Cox are going to be starting a, a Bible study on this this great fantastic book, uh, The Prodigal God, by uh, Tim Keller. And and if you remember the story of the, the the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son, really it is actually a, you could say a parable of two sons that are lost. Um, one who was lost in his recklessness, and the other one who was was lost because of his self righteousness thinking he didn't need God. So if you're looking, talk to Tim and Diane after service to think about that, to talk about that, because both of those needed God. Both people, whether we're, we're thinking we're full of ourselves and we have all this righteousness or whether we're down in the dumps and we think God could never love us, both of those need to realize and recognize we're poor in spirit. We, we recognize exactly that it's the righteousness that Jesus brings that makes us worth anything before God. Jesus continues, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Again, he's not talking about physical hunger or, or, or phys hunger or thirst in that physical sense, but rather a spiritual one. There, there are people who think, you know, I, I, I've read the Bible and I know enough. Jesus loves me, this I know, and that's all I need to know. No, there's so much. That's in the scriptures are, 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 are so shallow that a child can play in them, but they're so deep that a thousand elephants could drown. 
there, there are just a rich measure of, of depth in the wisdom that God lays out in his scriptures where we, we thirst, we hunger, we want to learn more. Again, if you're not going to go to the, the Tim and Diane's house for the, that Bible study, there's a whole laundry list of Bible studies that we have going on throughout the week to, to dive in and search through the scriptures to see the wealth of the knowledge that Jesus has laid out for us. But on the other hand, you know, there, there's people that think, this is all I need to know, but, but there are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are not satisfied with what they know about God and their faith. It growls, uh, it starves for that forgiveness, and that's what your Lord wants you to know each and every day. That's what he wants to lay out for you throughout the scriptures to show you the rich measure of his love. That even if you're not feeling like you're loved, even if you're not feeling like you're forgiven, you most certainly are and you're blessed by your Savior, Christ Jesus. Jesus continues, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. But no, one, no one likes to get picked on. No one likes to be ostracized. I don't think things have changed all that much from when I was in, in school, right? We like to be complimented. We like the pats on the back. Uh, but Jesus says, blessed are you who are hated, insulted, persecuted, rejected, despised because of me. Jesus promises us we will face rejection. We will face rejection in a hostile world. Maybe not to the degree of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in our first lesson, but most certainly, just like the ministries of Jeremiah or Amos, Hosea, Zephaniah, who had the task of proclaiming God's word to a hostile environment. That might happen in your life. There might be some hostility as you preach and proclaim the truth of God's word with your children, with a brother, with a friend. Maybe they will reject it. But then again, maybe not. There are some of you who are here today because someone loved you enough to share Christ with you. And you're all proof of that, that somebody brought Jesus into your life to show you that you are loved and you are cherished because of him, because he's made you valuable. Jesus says, great is your reward in heaven. Living your life as a Christian, Jesus doesn't say, you know, just do this or do that and your life will be a piece of cake. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. Life is messy. Life is dirty. It's going to be hard, and it's going to be an uphill battle a lot. And some of you I know are struggling through that right now. I know. I know you're hurting. And I know you're trying to search for answers and trying to figure out why this is happening to you and how can I get through this and how in the world am I going to overcome that. And life is never going to be the same ever again. And it might not be. It might not be the same ever again. I'm not going to lie to you. But how are you going to get through this? I can only tell you what gets me through each and every single day. It's that my identity in Christ. That I'm blessed, and you are too. What does that mean, that I'm, I'm, I'm blessed? We, we talked about this a couple weeks in Bible study. We, we said, you know, what, what does that mean to be blessed? It doesn't necessarily mean happy, because happiness is fleeting. But there's joy. Joy that never goes away. Joy that's always there, even in times of, of tears. It's being content with the circumstances and saying, God's going to give me enough of what I need to get through this situation or this problem. It's knowing that, that the favor of God's eye is upon me. That's what it means to be blessed. The favor of God's eye is upon you. It's on you, my friends. It's on you, my brothers and sisters. God loves you. And nothing ever will change that. You are certainly blessed. And if you agree with that, please say amen with me. Amen.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. At this time, we have opportunities to bring our offerings of thanksgiving. Uh, the ushers will be coming through with the, uh, with the baskets to do that. You can also give an offering online. Um, if you uh, would also at some point today, either scan the QR code that's in the worship folder just to mark your visit here with us today, or sign one of the connection cards because we'd love to follow up, love to get you connected, especially guests and visitors. We want to get you connected to our family and we want you to celebrate that blessed life with us today, but every day of your life. So if you, if you wouldn't mind just leaving that information so we can thank you for being with us today. I know, it, especially visitors, it's not easy getting into a new place. It's not easy going in. I can't imagine going into a new place and not knowing anybody and not knowing exactly what to do. But we're so excited that you're here. This is awesome. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely, we're very, very grateful that you took time to be with us here today. We bring our offerings of thanks then to the Lord. We continue our worship then with the prayer of the church. Lord Jesus Christ, you ushered in your light and your grace, so long foretold by prophets of old. Uh, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. And Lord, you know our hearts. You know that we need that as we walk through valleys of darkness and sickness, depression, shame and guilt. Shine, O Prince of Peace, like a light for the people in our world, but also for us. And let that good news of love and salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the planet. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or, or hope or peace or joy. Uh, move us and, and move other missionaries to flood across the world with the light of your gospel. And let that peace Rule in our hearts as we serve you and serve others with gratitude and joy. Be with those, Lord, uh, who are, are particularly struggling right now. Strengthen the faith of the sick, of the disheartened, uh, of those who are, are feeling despair, of those who are mourning, of, of those who are, uh, their faith is being tried at this time. Give them an extra measure of your grace and, and an extra measure of patience as they, they tackle the tasks that you have laid out for them and, and obstacles that, that Satan has them try to overcome. With your help, O oh Lord, we know that you can lead them through to be blessed today and every day. Hear us, Lord, also as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer. All this we ask in the name of our Savior Christ Jesus, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Your friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Coming through, uh, inviting you to come forward, the communicant members of peace to come forward for the distribution of the Lord's Supper. Um, if you're visiting or if you're a guest here and you're unfamiliar with our communion practices but would like to take the Lord's Supper with us in the future, please speak with me after the service. I'd love to tell you more about this amazing blessing from God. But this time, invite the communicant members of peace and friends from other churches to come forward at this time. God bless your communion here today.
Please stand for closing prayer and blessing. O God, with a star you led the wise men of old to worship the Christ child. So lead us that we too may worship him in all our lives. Holy Spirit within us, guide our works and shape our deeds and actions to fit expressions of worship, praise, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Uh, the kiddos that are sticking around for peace, kids, you can start making your way back with Miss Kim on your way out and we'll conclude our service with our hymn, I Am Trusting You, Lord Jesus.
Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see all of you here today. Uh, again, warm welcome to our guests and visitors that are here today. We're so excited uh, that you're here. Hope to get the opportunity to get to know you better and for you to get to know us better. A um, couple things in the worship folder. First of all, I want to apologize to the ladies' Bible study for last week. I, I, I neglected to put that in there. I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I'll... if. I'll try not to do that in the future. It was not meant anything or anything like that. I know you know that, but you know I just forget things sometimes. So I apologize for that. Uh, but you can see the things going on in the week ahead. Um, I mentioned in the sermon, the new Bible study. Uh, if you're interested in hearing more about that, Tim and Diane Cox are going to be holding that in their homes, uh, going through the book, uh, the series, The Prodigal God. Um, I actually just read that uh, this, this last week. It's very good. So uh, if you're interested in, in hearing more about that, talk to Tim and Diane. Uh, really cool take on the uh, parable of the, the lost son or the parable of the lost sons and the father's love. Uh, we also have a midweek Ash Wednesday service coming up February 22nd. So that'll be here in the tent at 6 o'clock. Um, so if you're uh, able to come and make that, we hope you can as we begin our 40-day journey to the cross with our Savior. Um, am I missing something? Yes. Yes, there's no class on Tuesday. I'm trying to be a good husband and take my wife out for Valentine's Day. So, <laughs> woohoo, yes, woohoo. So, uh, I suggest you do the same, you know, just saying. Um, but yeah, no, cl no class, no choir on Wednesday, but choir did get moved to, I think Kim already went to go teach the kids. Choir's going to be on um that's going to be on Wednesday, and that is not in the, the bulletin because uh, that came, that decision came after I, this had gotten run off. So, um, any other ones that I'm missing? No? All right. Make sure there's a lot of new faces here. Greet a friend. Uh, make a new friend. Say hello to somebody, and uh, we'll be getting started with Bible class here in about, uh, I'll say, seven to eight minutes, okay? I'll give a holler. Uh, don't make me break out the cattle prods to try and, and coax you to come back into Bible class. But otherwise, enjoy the snacks, enjoy the fellowship. Have a wonderful Super Bowl Sunday. Go Chiefs or Eagles, whichever you prefer. And uh, we'll see you next week, if not before. Thank you.